don't even have a clapper. That's my audio. <laughs> Because, I don't know if you know, I, I did this, but in researching the top visited YouTube sites, mm -hmm. you actually came up. That's how we found you. Ooh. So there's a site called Alexa.com, mm -hmm. and we were just looking at the top visited local, because mm -hmm. you have to see the location, yeah. you know. And you came up, and I was like, oh, okay, we need to get her on the show. Give us an insight to how did it start? Okay, well, I let's go all the way back. I believe I would have started when I was in university. So for me, it was a way for me to have a nice avenue away from my studies. Um, I did law, which oftentimes can be a little cut and dry. And I was always a creative person. So for me, that was a good avenue and a good balance in between the two. So I somehow stumbled upon YouTube when I discovered um, these beauty channels that were filming these videos and I said, hey, I could do this or I can show how to make a little DIY um, project. And that was the beginning of me getting into content creation and it has, yeah, that has been it from over a decade ago to now. I wanted to show more representation for people like me. Um, I was aware of some um, individuals that studied with me, uh, but they were based in the UK. They lived in the UK, but I didn't see any, I didn't see much people that had an accent, you know, like me. And I figured I do a lot of these little beauty videos and I can have someone that sounds like me, looks like me, be in front of the camera that they can relate to. So obviously now there's a lot more representation, but back then it was very few and far in between in terms of the um, content creators from the Caribbean that were out there producing content. I don't want to be biased, but the majority of the creators are based in the West. So they may be American, they may be um, European from the UK, and as someone from the Caribbean, it's always refreshing when I hear someone say, oh, I hear a Beijing accent or, oh, I hear, I hear a Caribbean accent. And I always like, you know, because it's, it's something that's authentic to me and I try to maintain that and to keep that. But yeah, to answer your question, there's, if, if you have the passion, that's the most important thing. You can, you would not um, run out of ideas. You will not um be like i've had enough if you have the passion and you let's say you like hair videos or you like natural hair videos there's space for everybody to grow and thrive so i would never discourage anybody from um starting a youtube channel or wanting to invest their talent in into that um revenue stream i had i, I can't even remember i can see it in my head it was a simple basic camera I, there was no like flip top that I could see myself. I just literally pressed record and I would film my videos and I could see myself now. I, I, and I'm not ashamed to say back then I had, I don't want to say a twang, but because, no, seriously, because I, I was still on that, that in between fence, like, are these people going to understand me when I speak? Do I need to adapt my, my speech to fit into their, you know, expectations? And then I got to the stage and I said, but Asha, you don't, you don't talk like that. And I realized um, that, okay, you might not understand me if I speak quickly, but if I speak standard English with my Beijing accent, you will understand me. And that was, yeah, how I got into it. But 4K... We were even at 720. We were at, <laughs> I don't know, 240, 480. Well, you have to know your target audience. That's another thing. Um, there are channels that are specifically dedicated to being like authentic. Um, if you want to speak Patois uh, dialect, there are channels that are completely dedicated to that. If that's your avenue, then you know, okay, I can speak as much broken English, dialect, patois as I want. If you know, okay, my target audience might be people from the Caribbean or there might be people that um, speak English, but obviously are not au fait with 
strong Caribbean or whatever accent, then you know you have to adapt. It's not losing your accent or losing how you are. It's being um, thoughtful and meticulous in how you deliver that content. So as I said, I am very deliberate in my speech. I know that as a Bajan, I can, we could tend to rattle off and to cut words and mash words together. But when I, um, when I, when I speak, I make sure, okay, Asha, you have to slow down a little bit. Keep the Bajan accent, but slow down. Um, when it comes to my vlogging style, I'm very much more in tune with my accent because I think that's a little more authentic. Mm -hmm. But for my sit down um, videos, like hair videos or DIY, I tend to be more standard English, but with the, obviously with the accent in place because the accent isn't going anywhere. Everybody starts somewhere and, and if you um, put yourself, if you just suppose yourself to somebody and you say, oh, but that person has a studio lighting and they have all these different backgrounds and this aesthetic, and I only have my, um, my phone and, and you know, my bedroom or whatever, you would, never, you would never get to that level or past that level if you keep comparing and you never start. So start with what you have. There, I guarantee there are people that are going to watch you if you're sitting down in your bedroom filming, there are people that are going to watch. If you're bringing content that is of quality and value, there's someone that's going to watch. And yeah. you spoke about target market mm -hmm. uh, earlier. What does that look like for the audience that watches your content? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would assume it's mostly women. Mm -hmm. And which country are they from? So my, my um, primary ones would be the U.S. and Canada and the U.K. And then, of course, there's some sprinkling of the Caribbean in there, especially when it comes to Instagram. Um, but predominantly, the U.S. and the U.K. and Canada will form the bulk of, of my viewership. And, of course, the bulk is female as well. But... There, there are mills that watch as well in terms of the, the content. So, yeah. So, let's talk about monetization because mm -hmm. there's someone right now on Twitter from Barbados making a protest to be monetized from Barbados. Did you see that? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Yes, I think he walked from, I can't remember where he walked from. For, he took a long walk and he, he created us change.org and reaching out to Mia Motley. Wow. Saying that we need to put Barbados on the map when it comes to YouTube monetizing because yeah. he's seeing the views, but he's not seeing the money. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about the nitty gritty and the mm -hmm. bottom of the line, you create this content, you mm -hmm. have engagement, where do you get paid? So for YouTube, my, um, my money's come through Google. So Google AdSense. So for example, you would be watching a video and all of a sudden an ad would pop up. So every time an ad is placed on that, and depending on how many people watch, Google would pay you based on the number of clicks, how long people watch the videos. There's a whole set that goes into the algorithm and how much you make. But the long and short is that that's how you get paid. Now, for a lot of creators, the bulk of their money comes from sponsorships. So. These could be hair videos, these could be featuring a product, this could just be even mentioning a product. And you get paid because you're exposing your audience to this product. So that is another, you know, avenue in terms of making money. And of course, on and off of YouTube, there are also other avenues in terms of making money from content as well. Um, but those are the primary ones in which you make money on youtube specifically but for you when you signed up you were in the uk so you put your location as a uk yeah but then i don't even think it was no i wasn't even making any money um the thresholds always change with youtube um so back then when i started in 2007 or something like that i can't even remember what the threshold was but i know it definitely was not making money now i think it is four thousand watch hours and you have to have at least a thousand subscribers so 
a no is very much attainable but then the the youtube partner program was very the like, elite so it was like you have to have this following and this in order to be um in order to monetize your channel but no it's very much like wherever you are if you can get these views you can be part of the program and start making money so yeah there, there are no excuses really well actually if you're from the caribbean you, you can't make money well no you can make money no as in from the google sense so if you put mm -hmm. trinidad or barbados mm -hmm. you're not in the program no i am in the program because the the so check, location uh -huh. so your location you put barbados mm -hmm. and well, the checks come straight to me in barbados uh-huh I have a chat right on my desk at home, ready to cash. But did you? Well, this Barbados. is this is interesting.